Hey, my comic book peeps. This is your boy J Rox coming at you with another graphic novel haul. Today we'll start it off with this book right here, Deadpool Max. This is the oversized hardcover. It covers the whole series. Uh, it's written by uh, David Lapham. I think that's how you spell it. Huh? There you go. He writes um the strain, which uh, if you watch the show on FX, I'm really enjoying the show. It's good. I'm digging it. And um, I read the hardcovers on, on from Dark Horse. Well made hardcovers, uh, very high quality. Uh, I'm digging the hardcovers, but I don't collect the strain because I'm really not liking the art on that book. It's just not my thing. But I really like um, this guy's writing. So and I like Deadpool. So when I saw this, I said Deadpool, uh, David Lapham, whatever his name is, and. Um, a max series which i'm enjoying other max series i've read so far so i said you know it seems like a no-brainer must have to me so uh can't wait to dig into it show you a couple of the interiors real quick without the dust jacket you see obviously it doesn't have the deadpool max the title but the cover is exactly the same which i like because when you read when you see the other marvel books once you take the dust jacket off they usually are just one solid color and then the title so I like this. I like that they have um actual artwork on the on the actual cover, like the much like the omnibuses, which I'm digging. This is issue one. Look at the artwork on this. It's pretty crazy. Like some gay sex going on there. Um, is that Deadpool? I don't know. I haven't read this book. Looks like Deadpool's in love with some other guy. Not here to judge, guys. I'm not here to judge. Okay, but anyways, uh, I was trying to show some of the artwork. It's my first time opening the book and actually like going through the pages. Oh, like he's taking some type of pills. But yeah, this artwork really, um, really caught my eye when I saw the cover. It's it, like if I was to see this in, in black and whites, I don't think it'd be that intriguing. I just, something about these, uh, Colors trips me out. I don't know, it just adds like its own uh, unique style. Oh, well, let's see who the color is this year. <laughs> let's see, the color is, is Kyle Baker with John Rauch. I'm really enjoying these colors here. All right, let's get to the next book. All right, now we also got um got this one, The Runaways. It's volume three. This is the last one I was missing. I seen this going, it goes for about $35 on um, eBay. You know, on a good day, you might get it for 30, 28, somewhere, it's always around that ballpark. I got this for like, I believe it, I think it was 15 with shipping and everything, like, like 12 and then four, no, 11 and four shipping. I don't know, but it was 15 total, if I'm correct, if I remember. But it doesn't have the dust jacket. So I, I don't really care. The book itself is in great shape. The corners, everything is sharp. It just uh, doesn't have a dust jacket. Um, but see, this is what I was talking about. See, these are basic uh, Marvel hardcovers. They're just basically all one color. They're usually black. Sometimes they could be blue or red, depending on the title. And then they just have the in foil color uh, the title. That's what I like about the Deadpool Max. It was a little different. This is written by Brian K. Vaughn. This covers issues, uh, the second series, issues 13 through 24. So I have all three hardcovers of The Runaways. I have that complete. And I have also two regular, um, following this, after issue 24, I have the next two books and regular hardcovers, regular six issue hardcovers. They don't make the rest in oversized hardcover. I wouldn't mind seeing an omnibus, but seeing as a sense, I already spent money getting these three books, I would have no need for the omnibus no more, but it would have been nice. All right, now this next book I got on eBay. This is uh, X-Force Volume 4. They're not numbered by volumes, but this would be Volume 4. This is titled um, Assault on Great Malkin. It's, um, these just get titled. They don't get numbered by volume, but this would be Volume 4. The first volume starting with um, New Mutants 87, uh, starting off with the first appearance of Cable, and there would be Volume 2, 3, whatever, and this is would be 4. And this one, it start off with a new creative team, uh, Greg Capullo on art and uh, Fabian Nassiesa on writing. This covers issues uh, X Force 19 to 25. I collect these hardcovers because um, there's a lot of crossovers into the X Men storylines, so they 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 uh, intertwine. 
So that's why I get them to read those. Because the stories on their own, these, um, other than Cable being kind of a badass, they're not that great. But yeah, let me get into some of the art on this real quick. It's still not a bad deal for 10 bucks. This is some of, um, Greg Capullo's, um, earlier artwork. This is the earliest stuff I seen from him. He started off here on X Force, then he went on to um, Spawn. It's nice artwork. It's not bad. Now, um, some people think he's like a great artist and this and that. I think he's okay. He's I don't think he's great. Now, if you see the Rob Liefeld earlier issues, he kind of just sort of copies the uh, Rob Liefeld's technique and style. Then when he went on to Spawn, you see on Spawn, McFarlane starts off the first 12 issues. Then Capullo starts on the next issues. And he kind of just um, copies McFarlane's style. So he, so I kind of see him more as a, a great filling artist that can mimic the style and go with that. He, I don't think he really had his own signature style that stands out. Alright, now this other book, I, I won this one on an auction on eBay for 18 bucks with shipping and everything, which I thought was a pretty sweet deal. Considering this book, it usually goes for around 30, 35. It's um, X-Men Executioner song. I had the trade paperback, but I... I was, uh, my bad, my bad. I was glad to get this one for a pretty good deal for the hardcover for 18 bucks. So now, I mean, I don't know, I might put the other one up for sale. There's no need to have both. This has a few extra, a few extras on it and stuff, you know, stuff that the bonus content that the trade paperback doesn't have. Show you. It gets X-Men 294 to 297. X-Factor 84 to 86. The 1991 X-Men 14 through 16 and X-4 16 through 18. Now you would uh, read this first, it leaves off on issue 18, then you read that other X-Force book I just showed you that will continue on issue 19 through 25. And then I have the other book that will continue from 297. That would be another book that will continue from 297 so forth to 315 or whatever. Being, I think it was the omnibus of, uh, I think it was the Fatal Attractions one. Now in the 90s, um, I think it was in 1990, yeah, in 91. No, in 19, yeah, 91. There was, um, Excalibur was it Excalibur I believe it was Excalibur on issue 100 it rebooted and started over and it was just called X-Men the new 1991 X-Men starting from issue 1 and our new mutants started over as well on 91 and it's and they just changed the name to X-Force and it started all over from issue 1 so they both kind of like rebooted at that time and there was a new series but this was originally new mutants this was originally Excalibur These are some of the extras for example like um see you see here when it's touched up with the new inks damn light see if i could put it like this see that cable see here the fire and so forth this is where professor xavier's at you really see the difference here with the how much better this looks with the fire and the, the color schemes with the new uh, technology. Now, Cable itself, I don't mind the way it looks on that old style one or the new style. All this blue suit and the vest, I like it a lot more here than I like it here. The gun. I kind of like in general this look better except for the Professor Xavier looks a lot better here but Cable I think he looks cooler here that's just my opinion you know but um but yeah you know you get a couple extra other bonuses over here who's Domino and a whole biography on her right there Iceman which is pretty cool you get a lot of extras you wouldn't get in the trade all right, now the last book of the day is um, Daredevil Electra. This is uh, called Loving War. It's a spine. It's nice, sleek look. It uh, looks, you know, uh, it's, it's white. It looks nice. Uh, foil letters. And the material, 
It's not leather, but whatever this is, like, it's easy to clean off. It doesn't get dirty that quick, even though it's white. So I'm enjoying that. Show you the, uh, I took the dust jacket off because I'm currently reading this book. But let me just show it to you so you could get an idea of what, uh, what the book would look like. It's Love and War. That's the cover. It's awesome artwork right here. I'm really digging the art style. It's really like its own thing. This would be the back of it. I always take these off, you know, why why read with those on and mess them up or whatever. If you plan to read Electro, um, you know, I definitely suggest start with the... This covers the issues... Well, let, let me slow down a little. This covers the issues Electro Assassin. It's a eight-issue miniseries. Then it also has a graphic novel of um, Daredevil Love and War with Electra. So it covers the miniseries and then it covers that. that it's like an 80-page novel. So it covers both, but you could get in the trade. It just comes with the Electra Assassin story. You could find the trade pretty cheap, eight, nine bucks on eBay or whatever. Uh, if you have any interest in Electra, I suggest that's where you will start. It gives you her whole origin. Um, it's really interesting stuff. I know nothing about Electra, so this was a, a great uh, jumping on point. And I've been looking for this book for a while. I've just been looking to find it at a decent price. I finally found it for 20 bucks because it usually goes for 50, 60. Well, that's the buy it now price that they asked for. You know, um, on auctions or whatever, you could get it for less maybe. I got luckily, you know, maybe 35, whatever, I don't know. I luckily got it for 20, but I had to buy a few other books. You know, they work with you in a bundle. Like, maybe I could give you this cheaper if you buy more, a uh, few other books. So, you know, we, we, we came to an agreement where there was a few other books I I, uh, I was interested in. I go, right, I'll also buy these, but... If you give me a discount on each one, I'll buy all of them. And, uh, you know, everything was all gravy. Now, um, this story, I noticed, it's like, um, she's like in an asylum, like in a, a nut house, you know? And she's a political prisoner. And then it gets real, it's real interesting stuff, guys. Uh, really good. This was written by Frank Miller in the 80s when he was on the top of his game. You know, all his best stuff is in, in the mid-80s. Um, let me get into some of the artwork real quick. You know, the first story is um, The Love and War. That's the cover to the trade. It still has the same creative team. It's still Frank Miller and the same artist. Um, here's the name of the artist. Bill Sienkiewski. I'm just going to totally tear up his name, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Yeah, but see, that's um, some of the artwork. Very unique, very interesting. Even the... I mean, the pencils are, are their own thing, and even the coloring is, um, is, is, brings its own style as well. This panel looks badass right here. I really like this panel right here. It's out here, you get a nice big page. It takes up the whole page, one panel. It's Electra. Well, this is a detective coming after her. It's good stuff. This guy's... um. Coming after her, she's escaped from this asylum and she kind of lost her memory. She doesn't know who she is, but little bits and pieces are coming back to her. And her, um, she's remembering that she knows like martial arts and she's an assassin and so forth. And she's fighting for some type of political reasons. I haven't got to the end of this story yet, but it's good stuff. Um, you know, definitely a great starting point if you want to read up on Electra. Um, this in, in way of uh, bonus and extra content and so forth, it really doesn't have any. When you get to the last page, it's just the last page and then that's it. Like this would be the last page. Then you just get to this. But uh, it's great stuff. I definitely recommend it. If you have any interest in her, check out that trade paperback. And um, that's all I got for you today. You know, if you like what you saw, hit that like button. Um, if you want to see more of the same, hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more of the same, guys. You know, I'll do my graphic novel hauls, my back issue hauls random uh reviews or other random stuff um you know just stay tuned check it out any questions leave them on the bottom any recommendations uh post your comments on the bottom and i'll, and I'll see you guys next time